this is hydrogen tap. I've received more than a couple email asking me to demonstrate a few things that I've kind of run over in my videos. One is the solid state relay that I hook up or use a lot. For those of you who already know everything there is to know about relays, you can change the channel. You have my permission. For those of you who, who are interested, this is the solid state relay that I normally use, one of many companies. It's got an input on the bottom and the load on the top. Most solid state relays look exactly like this. If you look on the bottom, you'll notice it says input 4 to 32 volts DC. That's the part that activates this relay or turns it on and off. Also notice there's a minus and a plus side. That's very important. These are polarized. You have to follow this rule. That's why a lot of people can't get them working. On the top, if you look, it's got 80 amps at 50 volts DC. That's the load. That's how much current it'll carry. In this case, it's a lot. Also notice that on the top, it's a minus and a plus, the same as the bottom. You must follow this rule. So I'm going to show you how you hook this up. First, we're going to activate it. Also notice the LED here. It tells you when there's an input to this, whether the relay's turned on or not. So let's hook this up. Okay, plus is on the right side. So what we're going to do is hook up red lead to the plus. Minus is on the left side. The same as on the top. This is the input stage. This is what turns the relay on. I'm using for this demonstration a 12 volt battery. One of the ones that I always have here. I've got my minus on this side, positive on the other side. I don't advise you using batteries this heavy because if you get a short, you'll burn up your leads. But having said that, understand that the load is will draw what it wants. So if the load only takes 0 0.04 amps, even though you're using this big battery, it'll only draw 0 0.04 amps. Whatever the load requires, that's what it's going to draw. Okay, let's get back to the relay. So we're going to take the minus side of the relay and hook it up to the minus side of the battery. That's here. Positive side, which is on the right. I'm going to hook to the positive side of the battery. It's over here, and you'll notice the light going on. The amount of current this is taking is very, very little. You can see it on now. Okay, so I'm going to leave the lead that's connected to the minus side to the battery, and I'm I've taken off the positive side. So what we're going to do is leave that alone for now. To activate this relay, all I have to do is take this lead and put it on the positive side of the battery. Next, what we're going to do is hook the load up. In this case, we're going to use the famous car light. A car light's very easy to hook up because there's no positive or minus. No negative, no positive to this light. What we're going to do is take that off like that, and you can see on the back a light is one thing that only that doesn't care whether you have positive or negative on the back. All it's doing is heating up an element in it. You can't see it in this particular one, but all it does is heat an element up in here in a vacuum that causes the light to flow. So we don't have to worry about positive or negative. So what I'm going to do is for that I'm going to hook up two yellow leads. 
which means it's not polarized. And first we're going to hook this to the battery to make sure it works. Posit positive or negative, it doesn't care. Hook that up, and you can see we have a light. Okay, back to our video. Oh, incidentally, it's mounted on this for a reason. This is aluminum. If you look really close, on the back of these solid state units, they usually have a piece of metal. That's because if you pulse this unit very fast, it gets very hot. That metal is to absorb or put out the heat. You must mount it on something like aluminum. Aluminum is the best because it absorbs the heat, gives it off very quickly. If you don't do that, you're going to burn out the relay. If it's very little load or if it's you're only turning it on and off a few times, then it doesn't matter. But if you pulse it, you should. I would say you must mount it on some kind of heat sink. Also note that I've got a diode here. What that diode is, is because of the pulsing unit. If you pulse this, you get a back EMF back through the relay and it'll burn it out if you don't watch out. So I've got a diode in here. But let's go around the diode for now. So what we're going to do is activate the light with the relay. So again, we've got a positive side and a negative on the top. That's the load side. We're going to hook one side to positive from the back of the light. Either one of these will work. The other side of the light, so in other words, it's going from positive here through the light, and it's got to go hit the positive side of the battery. Remember, this is the positive side, so it's got to go through the load and go to the positive side of the battery. If it doesn't, it will not work. So we're going to hook this to the positive side of the battery. Remember, this has to receive positive from the battery. So if you put it, put it to a load, that's like the light, it's got to go through the light to the positive. And I'm sure most of you are not doing that, that's why it's not working. Okay, now we have the negative left. What we're going to do is take black lead representing negative, hook it to the negative side. This is the load. This side is going through the light to the positive. This side goes straight to the negative. And now we're going to hook to our negative side of the battery. So as long as the relay is not on, we have no current flow. Here's our bottom half. This is the input stage. Remember, one side is going to negative side of the battery. And now this side is going to go to positive. And you can see, as soon as I hook to positive, the relay turns on. The LED is on. And the light turns on. And that's all you have to do.